Hello, everyone, and welcome to this latest edition. We are on, I believe it's episode 167 of Off Track with Carruthers and Bice. I am obviously Bice, Sean Bice here in Central Ohio, and I'm joined by Moto America's Communications Manager, Paul Carruthers, who is in glorious and beautiful Southern California. Paul, how are you doing today? I'm good. 167 weeks in a row that we've spoken. You know, it's weird. Like, we do it, we do it every week. We have not... <laughs> I, I think we're, I mean, there's some things I, I don't, I don't do like every week or on a regular basis, but this thing where it's like clockwork, man, we just do it. I guess we love it so much, right? Yeah. you might want to call it love. I don't know if I'd go that far, but um, well, you, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, it's kind of like brushing your teeth, except, you know, obviously I hope, I hope we both brush our teeth more than once a week, but it's just, <laughs> it just sort of happens. And and we make it work and it's, and it, I know it is fun to do it. it. It gives us an opportunity to talk to somebody different every week and, yeah. uh, and find out what they're up to. And, and that's always good. And so far, so good. Our, our listeners enjoy what we do and they like hearing from all our uh, different people in our paddock. And even, you know, we, uh, we've done a little bit lately is uh, people outside of our paddock as well. So I think it's a cool thing. I enjoy doing it and people enjoy listening to it and you enjoy it. So we'll continue. Yeah, and, and this is our first one of 2022 and onward and upward, you know, with, with each passing podcast, we get closer to the season. And I mean, I was thinking about it. It's like, you know, we're in January and, you know, February is funny for me. I've always said it's the shortest month that ends up seeming like the longest month, but we're back in action right after that. I mean, pretty much the beginning of March, we're, we're going to be getting ready to get down to Daytona. So it's going to be quick. Yeah, it's, I was thinking about that same thing yesterday. Um, we've got to, uh, you know, it's time to start like looking at hotels and flights and all that stuff. And it really feels like it's going to get going because once it gets going this year, it, it goes pretty quick, you know, because of the fact that we started Daytona, which is kind of cool because to me, it was like, that's always when the racing season did start. And then obviously we got away from that with Moto America and, uh, and we had different starts, whether it was a test at Coda or a test at Barber or what have you. But now it's uh, it's kind of nice to have that Daytona start again. Yeah, and I mean, your stories that you've been doing each week about Daytona, the last 30 of them, um, it's real interesting. To, you know, like the, the ones, like, for instance, the one we, you recently did with uh, when, when Scott Russell crashed in one. I mean, it doesn't seem like it was that long ago. I know it's a ways ago. It was in the 750 era, but it still seems like it wasn't that that long ago. And then all these things that kind of come up along the way, this one this week, I'm not going to give it away, but I thought it was interesting what you were kind of pointing out yesterday about what happened during that particular Daytona. So <laughs> people watch for that and read that story. And those of you of a certain age and certain memory will, will remember it vividly like Paul and I do. So it's yeah, good... it's, uh, and this one that I just, I'm working on, I, I think I finished it yesterday or it's almost finished, but, uh, the second year of that one was the actually the first year of it kind of brings us full circle because that was the first year that they ran 600s as the 200 oh yeah um, it, with formula extreme is what they called it was kind of like a a souped up version of um of super sport so it kind of at least brings us back into that middleweight weight bike for um the 200 in this story and also what we're going to be doing so it's yeah kind of full circle there a little bit well, so speaking of Daytona, let's let's bring in the two people we're talking to this week. We know, we haven't done two guests on at the same time, certainly in an audio version like we've done. We've done a video version, I think, with the partners, but um, this will be interesting. So we've got two guys on, um, and Paul, we can't take either of these riders for granite because they're both from the granite state of New Hampshire. And yes, I stayed up all night thinking about that. So, <laughs> but um, it's. Uh, We've got we've got Teague Hobbs and Ben Glady on. They're both originally from New Hampshire. Ben still lives there. Um, Teague lived in Florida for a while, and then he moved back home. But we're going to talk about his situation a little bit. But we're going to have them announce, uh, make an announcement, each of them, um, and then we'll kick it off and go from there. And this is going to coordinate with um, a press release coming out. But uh, we'll start with with Ben Glady. Uh, ben, so you were racing in Junior Cup last year and fought uh, tooth and nail with with Tyler Scott the whole year and you know narrowly uh, ended up second and and we thought it was going into that last last round and uh, 
you know, you almost won it, but uh, we know how you feel about almost winning things. So um, onward and upward, let's, let's have you start by saying hello and, you know, tell, tell us right off what, what the announcement is that you have. Uh, yeah, so this coming year, um, I'm going to be riding for Robum Engineering in the Twins Cup on the Aprilia uh, RS660. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. And uh, yeah, just kind of just keeping training this winter and be ready for for Daytona. Okay, and let's right one right after another. Say hello to Teague. Hi, Teague. Um, what's the announcement that you have to make? Um, I mean, me and Ben Glady are going to be teammates this coming year. We're both joining up with Robum Engineering, and uh, I think it's a it's a big stepping stone for both of us. Obviously, Ben's coming up through the Junior Cup ranks, and um, I'm going on my second full season of Twins Cup riding. So, I think we both have a pretty good, you know platform to come off of and obviously you know we have you know great guys to work with at Robum and uh, I think it can be a great year for the both of us. Hey so how about that both you guys uh, have similar announcements you're going to be riding in the same class on the same team and as teammates so imagine that I'm glad we put this together <laughs> so yeah. let's let's go back to Ben and talk to you a little bit uh, Ben so you were in you were in uh, junior cup last year have you ridden the Aprilia yet? And you're you're a lanky rider, uh, tall, so is Teague. Does the bike fit you a little bit better? Or is it about the same? How, how does it feel if you've ridden it? Yeah, so I've ridden I've ridden the Aprilia um, a handful of times. I did um, a track day and a couple of club races on it, um, and it definitely fits me a lot better than the 400 did. It's it's a little bit longer, so I have a little more um, arm room. Um, but you know the bikes. The bikes don't really necessarily. They don't get much bigger necessarily. So, um, you know, I think I'll always kind of be big on a road race bike. So how? Let's ask. Let's ask Teague the same question. Uh, last year you raced a Suzuki. What what kind of experience do you have with the Aprilia? Um, I haven't ridden it yet. Um, this weekend will actually be my first time on it and, uh, and then I'll do a little bit riding before Daytona, but, um, I've, I've sat on it a few times and, uh, overall I've, I have a lot of experience obviously on my Suzuki 650. Um, and I used to race an R6 and, uh, I think the Aprilia has a little bit more of an R6 feel where you kind of sit on top of it and over it, which I like, um, my Suzuki kind of felt like you sat in it and it was long. Um, so I'm pretty excited to get on the Aprilia. Um, I kind of like that riding style a little bit better. So I think it can work, you know, in my favor. So we'll see how it goes. You raced against the, the Aprilias last year, obviously, as you said, on, a, on your Suzuki. Uh, yeah. Was there things that you noticed about their bike that was different than the Suzuki? Is it faster? Does it corner better? It, what, it, what, are, what did you see from racing against it? Um. Well, it's funny you say that because I was, I was talking to my dad about it just the other day. Is like every round last year, obviously I have a ton of experience racing with them, but never on one. Um, but every round last year, the competitors, Aprilia against me, they, they kind of did different things. And I think it was because, you know, obviously last year was a, a development year for the Aprilia. It came out, they got their bikes like a week before the first race. So um, everyone was figuring out their bikes. So, you know, I, I firsthand saw the changes they were making and the differences their bikes were were doing around the racetrack and uh i don't know i i think i think uh power wise it's it, it's it's hard to say i think they're kind of just two different animals um i mean i'll be able to you know give more feedback on that after i ride it for sure okay i got a question that brings us back to to last year at the opening round, you jump the start. I don't even, you probably don't even want to answer this, but maybe the answer is good. I don't know. But because I can't remember, but you jumped the start and you didn't take the penalty. So you ended up getting disqualified. And then the next day you come out and you came out in one race. What, what, what happened there with the, did you not see the flags or did you just choose to ignore them? Um, it, it was kind of a mix of a bunch of stuff. Um, it was, you know, between me judgment call from the team on, on pit lane with the, the you know the uh the board and um you know i just i got caught out one lap less than i thought i had to come in for the uh you know the ride through and um so obviously 
first race of the season. We got pole. We were super happy. And, and to finish it like that, you know, we had a great race going on with Caleb to Carol and, uh, and Jody and, uh, to end it like that was frustrating, but, uh, you know, going into race two on Sunday, I was, I never wanted something more. So, uh, Man. I guess it was kind of, it was kind of like a hidden blessing, you know? Yeah. So Ben, let, let's talk about last year some, a little bit, because, you know, in our social media and in reviewing last year, we've made a lot, we've talked a lot about what, what happened in super sport and actually two years of Richie Escalante and Sean Dylan Kelly, just absolutely going at each other back and forth. But, but we've also made a point about you and, and Tyler Scott this past year, how things went in it. It came right down to the end. Um, and I mean, you could look at almost anything during the season and say, well, maybe there was something that might've changed that would have had you maybe win the championship instead of him. It was that close. You know, what do you, how do you assess that season? And do you ever think about that? Like if I hadn't had this one thing happen at this, in this one race or at this one round, you know, I would have been champion or do you, do you think you did all you could and how does it set with you that you were runner up in that championship? Um, you know. I think the biggest thing that kind of separated that championship was um, I, I had done a club race up at Loudon and in practice, I crashed and broke my wrist. Um, so the last two rounds at New Jersey and Barber, I was racing with broken wrist. Um, so I think, I think that was the biggest kind of setback for me this past year on um, like championship wise, just um you know, not being able to ride at 100% for those last two rounds. Um, but I think that, you know, we put in as good an effort as we could. And, you know, the team did everything they could for me. Um, always had a great bike underneath me. And just, yeah, just I think, you know, had I not broken my wrist, I think we would have had a lot better shot, shot at it. So I want to ask you, Ben, now that you, you're going to be on an Aprilia and, you know, so last year you rode that Kawasaki Ninja 400 against Tyler Scott's KTM. And there was some balancing done between those two bikes. I, I believe that the, the, uh, the, I think the, the KTM had to be a little bit heavier or something because it maybe had a little bit more power, but it seemed in watching you, there was a lot where you guys, I mean, in, in junior cup, the draft is extremely important anyway, but it seems like it's a lot of what you had to do. You just could not accelerate past Tyler. You had to pick and choose where you were going to get past him and how you were going to do it. Is that an accurate assessment of, of the way it was on your bike? Yeah. I mean, that KTM, it had a ton of torque. Um, so coming off the corner, I just, I couldn't do anything with him. I had to get in front of him going into the corner and just kind of hope he couldn't square me off and drive back by me. Um, so, you know, I think a lot of my races were just kind of like sitting behind him watching, trying to figure out where he was a little bit slower and weaker than I was. Um, and then, you know, the last couple of laps, just kind of attacking him and passing him as much as I could. And, you know, for sure, I know about your broke your wrist and that was a terrible thing that happened, but I mean, you were still acquitted yourself pretty well in those rounds. Did you, were you wearing a cast? You know, how did you deal with that? Was there pain? Did you, did you take any kind of a shot to um, try to numb that pain a little bit before you rode and it had to hurt under braking. So what, what were the factors with that broken wrist in those last couple rounds? Um, yeah. So I, I would just, I had a, pretty stiff wrist brace that I had to wear, um, while I wasn't riding. But, um, other than that, it, I just was taking Advil trying to, trying to get the pain to go away a little bit, but, um, yeah, especially in New Jersey with all the bumps and everything, it would, it vibrate a lot. Um, and that was what got me the most was just the vibration through the bars. All right. I got, I got a question for both of you and T can go first. Um, have do you guys have any experience at Daytona and, and how exciting is that to be going there to, to start your season? I mean, it's kind of cool that twins cup has been chosen as the, as the other, one of the other classes that's going to run in addition to the 200. So give us a little bit of, of your thoughts on that race. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, it's pretty cool to have uh, moto America and the premier series go back to Daytona and start the season off like that. Um, I mean, that, that's probably one of the things I'm most excited for is, is starting the year off at Daytona and, and, uh, I have uh, some pretty good experience there. So um, I think I'm a little bit ahead of the curve on some of the riders 
who don't have as much experience there. And uh, I'm really excited to get it going there. And I, I think it's just a great kickoff to the season. So um, it should be good. I'm, I'm glad they added in the two twins races. So uh, we'll see how it all plays out. And um, it'll be cool to see, obviously, the Pro Series bikes go around that track again. And you, Ben? Uh, yeah, so I have never ridden Daytona. I've been there to watch, but I have never actually ridden it. So, you know, I might need a, might need a tow for a couple sessions, Teague. Um, but, yeah, I'm pretty excited for it. I think, uh, think it's a good first round. It'll be, be interesting. It'll be, uh, I think there'll be a lot of riders at the front, um, you know, just using the draft. Have either of you been in a situation like you're going to be in as far as having a teammate that's really competitive with you? Like I can see you guys being, I, I think in, in certain ways it's going to help you guys, especially with machine setup and things like that. But then there could also be some rivalry issues. Like Teague mentioned, you know, you, you mentioned getting a toe around Daytona for a couple of laps and he's very likely to do that until you start going fast and then he's not going to help you anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we had a kind of similar situation, um, in 2019 when, um, me, Teague, Dallas Daniels, um, and Jamie Alcidio were teammates. Oh, that's uh, true. Yeah. Yes. We all, me, Teague and Jamie all kind of like settled into that, the same group that was battling with each other. Um, and then Dallas was up battling with Rocco, but yeah, I think it'll be, it'll be good. Yeah, no, I think it's uh, – I was going to bring up the Junior Cup days as well. I mean, me and Ben were teammates that year, and we've always, you know, been super competitive with each other. But um, I think we can both kind of use each other for the better. You know, I I have a little bit more experience on a Twins bike than he does, but, you know, there's a lot of things that he does on a bike that I can't do. So, um, you know, we go to certain tracks and stuff, you know, I'll be able to help him, he'll be able to help me, and, um, you know, it, it'll be good and, and like – like Ben and I said, we both worked with each other before and we kind of came from a similar background and riding together. So it should be good. You know, Teague, of course, you've seen the video. We've seen the video. We've shown it a bunch of times, that crazy situation with Caleb DeCaro where he did that insane flip in midair, which he said he wasn't trying to do. It just sort of happened. But, you know, there was that carnage, um, five bikes or four bikes, and then one other joined the, the fray, and you just barely avoided it. Did you even know that that was going on? Did you get any sense of that where you were on the track when that all happened? Uh, honestly, it's pretty crazy. I've, I've, I've watched that race a few times over, just, you know, kind of <laughs> knowing I'm lucky because uh, that, that could have gone way worse than it was. Luckily, those guys were all right. Um, but it, it's funny as I was at the side of Caleb going into turn one on the left. And, you know, if, if I hadn't tried to make a pass around the outside or, or if I just settled into second, you know, all the, all the fluid that his bike released would have gone all over me and my tires too. And I would have went down as well. So, um, I'm, I'm thankful that I kind of just made a call that try to get up alongside him, maybe even make a pass. And then obviously, he, you know, initiated his crash. All the guys behind him went down, and I, I heard something. So I looked back, and I saw all of them sliding across the gravel. And, and uh, man, how did that happen? Because I really didn't see the fluid come out of his bike and go on all, all the tires and stuff. So it's kind of crazy how it all went down. But uh, luckily, they're all, all all right, because it could have been a lot worse for, for everyone. All right, you guys – before Ben joined the call, you were we were having a little discussion off air with Sean, and he brought up your your living conditions, and and now I'm like really interested because I'm just curious to see what what that means because I, I don't know. But why don't you tell us all a little bit about what's going on in your your life offside the race outside the racetrack? Um, it's actually it's pretty simple. I mean, and a lot of a lot of racers can relate, but um, I mean, all throughout last season. I was uh, I was renting an apartment in Manchester, New Hampshire, and uh, you know working away from the track and stuff. But um, you know it came to the last few rounds of the season, and you know funds were tight, so I moved out of my apartment, um, used some of that rent money to get the barber jersey, and uh, and then after that I've 
kind of just been floating around. You know, I stayed up in New Hampshire with a friend for a little bit. Then uh, I went to Vermont for a little bit. And now I'm actually on my way to Florida. That's where my parents are from. And um, I'll go down to Florida for a little bit, try to ride as much as I can. And, uh, yeah, just kind of float around because my number one priority right now is, is uh, you know, to go fast come March. So. All right. As a guy that lives in Southern California, I'm just curious, what is, what is a, a, an apartment in Manchester, New Hampshire rent for? <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's not a beautiful place, but um, I was actually, I was, it was a duplex and I was renting it with some of my brothers and they moved out as well. And so it just seemed like the right time anyways. But I mean, we were renting it for like, I think 12, 50 a month or something like that. Yeah, well, that 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 would keep you homeless here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, I, <laughs> yeah, I, but yeah. So that's where I'm at right now. Kind of just going wherever the wind takes me, and and uh, like I said, going to Florida. Probably gonna stay there until March and um, do some riding and hang out with the family and all that fun stuff. Yeah, you know, Teague. Um... I have that in common with you. When we lived in, we lived in New Hampshire about 15 years, just after my wife and I got married and uh, we rented an apartment in on North Elm street. It was actually the top floor of a house and it happened to be, actually it was my, the creative director at the ad agency I worked at. It was her house. And so my boss was kind of my landlady too. And it was a beautiful house, but gosh, I think we paid $500 for that uh, a month for that thing. And we lived there, you know, and they, she never changed the rent. So um, that was a while ago, but I want to, I want to talk to both of you guys about, about New Hampshire. I can't help but not do that having lived there. And, and, you know, Loudon was the first racetrack that I ever went to. And it was about 45 minutes where, from where I, we lived in Raymond, once we bought a house and, you know, you guys are both from New Hampshire. I know about the legacy of the Loudon Road Racing Series and the Penguin School and Eric Wood. So you guys, you guys both have ties to Eric Wood and what he's, what he's done in the, the Northeast and what he's done for riders up there, as well as when he used to race himself. Um, let's start with, with you, since we're talking to you to, to start with, what is, what does Eric Wood mean to you and what has he done for your program? Uh, I, Eric Wood has gone above and beyond countless times, uh, just to even get me to the racetrack. Um, I mean, it all started when I was 14 and, you know, he, he took a lot of initiative alongside a, a really good friend of mine uh john grush and john grush and eric wood they came together and and got me to the racetrack when i was 14 and i rode a ninja 300 for a season and um you know they started their penguin racing school mentor program and um then ben came along uh about a year later and um but no eric wood he's been you know I, he's worth his weight in gold <laughs> um you know, through the highs and lows, he's always there. And, and uh, you know, whether I need a friend, a coach, you know, a mentor or someone to put me in, in my place, you know, he's, he's the guy to call. So, um, yeah, he's been, he's been with me through every step of the way. And, and uh, so that's, that's, that's huge. So. Yeah. And Ben, I mean, same thing for you. Talk about Eric, but the other thing I wanted you to mention, and I can't remember the exact stat on this, but it relates to what it used to be called the Loudon Road Racing Series. And there's, you have a record for something, the youngest rider to win a championship. Is that correct? Uh, fill us in on that detail as well as talking about Eric. Uh, yeah. So when I was um, 11 years old, um, Eric let me come out to a penguin school at um, a small track um, in New Hampshire. Um, oh, I'm trying to think of the name. Canaan, uh, Canaan yes. Motor Club. Um, so he let me come out there when I was 11. Um, and so I rode there for a year and they, him and John Grush pulled a bunch of strings to get me into Loudon at, at 12 years old. Um, so, you know, I started riding at Loudon when I was 12 and then, um, you know, I was able to get my license and everything to actually be able to race at Loudon at 13. Um, and yeah, I was the youngest rider to get uh, rookie of the year at Loudon and, you know, I definitely, I wouldn't be able to do any of that without Eric. And, you know, honestly, I don't even know, know how much I'd be road racing if it wasn't for Eric. 
You know, Ben, I don't know how you managed to get around the country like you do, but I cannot fit this in my head. The fact that I believe that you're, you're still or hat were anyway, an instructor at Penguin Road Racing School. You're an instructor at American Super Camp. We did a story and we featured you in that. And you also seem to be always somewhere. I, I think, um, and you can tell us what you're doing this weekend, um, but I think you're, I think you're racing flat track this weekend. So how in the heck do you get around the country as much as you do for being so young? Um, I think you do have your driver's license now, but you don't, you don't drive, do you? Oh yeah. I drive everywhere. I've put, uh, 14,000 miles on my van since the middle of July. So, so once you got a driver's license, it was just all out from there, huh? You just started driving like crazy. Is that, is that the deal? Yep. I just, uh, I got to Hunter Dunham's house yesterday in Georgia. Um, so I'm here right now. And then tomorrow morning we're, we're headed out to go to the Corey Texter's winter throwdown um, in Callahan, Florida. So, you know, we'll be doing that this weekend and just having some fun. And how much flat track do you do? Um, well, it's the last time I rode a flat track bike other than super camp is 2018, which was my 85. So um, not a lot, but I, I wanted to get back into it because, you know, I have a lot of fun doing it and, you know, just, just something else to keep me on a motorcycle. What bike do you ride now there? For What bike will you flat track? Uh, right now I have a 09 Sierra 450 that I'm going to ride. Okay. Is that the bike you were on when you, what was it, in Maryland or Delaware or wherever you and Gus Rodeo and Joe Lamandry were racing? Was that the same bike? Uh, no, that's not the same bike. That's, I have a newer 450 that I have as my supermoto bike. Um, so this is just, it's one of the 450s that I had um, as a motocross bike. All right, so let's go back to Teague. You said you're headed to, did you say you're headed to Florida as well, right? Yeah, yeah, my parents live down there and I'm driving there now. And, uh, you know, like I said, probably stay there until March. So you'll train and do you do, do, any, do any flat track as well or not? No, I've actually never even been on a flat track bike. So, uh, I mean, I've, I've been on occasional like an, a 100 or a 125 here or there. But, um, yeah, no, I I spent uh, so far the past three or four months in New Hampshire. And my training is just pretty much just consisted of, you know, a bunch of time at the gym, doing whatever I can. It's obviously a little cold up there to be riding. So, uh, now that I'm in Florida, um, I'll be able to go ride supermoto you know go to track days um kind of just do whatever you know because the weather allows it so teague i've got a controversial question to ask you i've been wanting Uh to ask you well yeah so so I, i bet this won't be surprising to you but i i have heard and well you know talking to various people around riders mostly riders uh within the paddock I've heard about Teague Hobbs in his riding and I've heard everything from he's an aggressive rider to maybe a little more than aggressive. And I actually talked to Matt Spicer about this and it was even before I knew, I knew Matt thought a lot of, about of you and as he does for Ben and really wanted to get you guys on the team. And I actually asked Matt about that. I didn't, I didn't say, well, I don't know if you should hire him because I hear he's really aggressive. It was more like, mm. you know, I hear some stuff. So, um, I'm sure you're aware of it. And Matt absolutely did not even bat an eye. He's like, I want a rider that wants to win. And, you know, he said, uh, you know, I, I, he might be aggressive, but that's okay with me, you know? And he never said anything. He said, I haven't heard much about that. And, and uh, I'm sure you've heard it. Has any rider ever said anything to you? Do you know where I'm going with this? Have you ever heard this before? I mean, no riders really came up to my face and said anything about it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Deep down, deep, uh, deep down, I just thinking back on it, I'll, I'll be as aggressive as I need to be to win, you know, playing. Some, you know, yeah, and I mean, that's kind of the, the way riders, I took it. But, too. Go ahead. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, no, you broke fine. up for a minute. But, but, but no, okay. like, like I said, you know, I, I'm uh, everyone's there to win. So, uh, you know, I, I try to act like, and, uh, you know, yeah, you got to do what you got to do. So, 
Yeah. And I mean, I intentionally tried to put you on the spot with this because I, I didn't know if you'd heard it or not. And like I said, it's not like it's this prevailing opinion around the paddock. And, you know, I'll hear this about any, any number of riders mm. from different riders, you know, riders, riders will tell us stuff that they might not tell another rider. Right. And, you know, I, I've, I've looked at you on the track and I didn't feel that way either. I mean, you know, you talk about Loris Baz and, and how he mixed stuff up with Skoltz last year and, and Cam Peterson in Superbike. And, you know, I mean, people would look at that and say, okay, Baz is an aggressive rider, but he's a world-class rider too. And he wants to get to the front. And, you know, I think Matthew Skoltz acknowledges that Cam does too. And, and um, I know for, you know, let's switch it to Ben too. I mean, Ben, I know you've come up against riders who are aggressive, even on warm-up laps, if you know what I'm talking about. So, oh, yeah. I know I'm, all about that. Yeah. But you and Tyler would be out there, and, you know, I mean, you guys could, would make some fairly aggressive moves on each other, but it's it's all about trying to win, right? And, I mean, that's instilled in you guys at, at a pretty young age, I, I guess. And is that is that something you're taught, or is it just something you have in, in your makeup of who you are? Um, I mean, honestly, I think a lot of it comes from the dirt track side of things, you know everybody's always hitting each other riding flat track, you know, um, growing up, like we would do drills like that, where, you know, someone would come up the inside and stuff you and kind of run into you a little bit. So like, I'm just, I'm used to that. And, you know, I, me and Tyler would throw some elbows at each other, you know, while we were riding and, you know, it wouldn't affect, it wouldn't affect either of us. When you're at the American super camp, Ben, what's the deal with the broom handle? Have you ever hit anybody with a broom handle and have you ever been hit with a broom handle? Oh yeah. I've been hit plenty of times and I've hit plenty of people. <laughs> um, what's, what's it all about? <laughs> so Sean, I've been hit with that and I've had to do push-ups. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about it. Yeah. So, um, you know, if you're riding around with your outside elbow down, you know, a big thing that we, we do is have you keep your outside elbow up when you're turning. Um, you know, you'll stand just right on the outside of the track and you know, if their elbows down, you'll, you'll hit their elbow with the, with the broomstick and you know then the in their head it'll click oh elbow up and they put their elbow up um it's just kind of a little reminder to save our voices instead of yelling we can just kind of tap you with the with the broom broomstick <laughs> so i want to go back to teague for a minute and i want to ask both of you guys this question because it's that time of year it is the winter and you know i my memories of winter and living up in new hampshire and even winter it's here that this way in ohio although we don't really get much snow but um uh, ben, I know that you snowboard, uh, but Teague, I want to ask you first, do you snowboard and have you ever snowmobiled? Yeah, I actually, I, I love snowboarding. I went three or four days ago and uh, I've never been on a snowmobile. Okay. Um, ben, have you been on a snowmobile? Uh, yes, I have. I went up um, to like upstate Maine or um, right near Canada. And, you know, I spent um, a couple of days up there snowmobiling. Um, I think last year or the year before. Um, so, you know, I, I want to go do it again because, you know, it's just, it's kind of fun to do something different. So you both have snowboarded. I want to ask each of you guys one at a time. I'll start with Teague. Teague, when you snowboard, does it feel like riding a motorcycle? Because when I ski, I haven't snowboarded, but I snow ski a little bit. And that sort of going in and out, back and forth feels like going through curves on a motorcycle. And I've always thought that's the same way it is with surfing. And Paul can tell us about that, but do you get that feeling on a snowboard that you're it's, it's a little bit like, like motorcycling. Um, I mean, I've never ridden a snowboard it and, and clicked in my mind that it related to motorcycles, but uh, I mean, I, 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 I enjoy it, you know, the same way, you know, um, I'm obviously less competitive and, uh, you know, less out for blood when I get on a snowboard. I'm, I'm out there to enjoy my time and, and you know, take a cruise. But, um, I mean, I, I've never related it to motorcycles in any way, but I um, I don't know. I, I think it's all just getting active. I, You know, obviously, I race motorcycles. I like to snowboard. I, I have surfed before. It's just, I like to I like to do stuff, you know, just not just play video games, you know what I mean? But, um, I mean, I don't know about Ben, but I don't, I don't really... I don't really find any relation to motorcycles on a snowboard. It's just, I don't know, just two different mindsets, I think. How about you, Ben? Um, so I ski and snowboard. Um, and I'd say skiing kind of relates a little more. Um, but if skiing, I would compare more to like riding a bicycle. Um, okay. 
but snowboarding now i never i've never related that to motorcycles at all you know what i think i think i've identified what it is i think for me it's because i ride a motorcycle but i don't race one so yeah when i'm out i'm just cruising around back roads which is kind of what i'm doing when i'm skiing too so maybe that's why i get that feeling and you guys don't because you're trying to win something and i'm just out there trying to ride around and smell <laughs> the air and you know see what's out there does that make sense Sean, you're probably going the same speed on your skis that you go on your motorcycle. <laughs> probably, but I suck as a snow skier. I'm the worst ever, man. I, I went to these guys, Teague and, and uh, Ben will relate to this. I went to Cannon Mountain one time because when we lived there, I, I used to do the advertising copywriting for that ski area. And hey, I'm not trying to rip that place, but God, that thing is icy and it's that's bad news. I mean, Mount Sunapi was a little more to my liking, but have either of you guys ever skied down Cannon? And is it, am I just a baby or what? It's pretty intense to, to me. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I always kind of stayed away from Cannon. Um, I like Sunapi. It's an all right mountain. I kind of just went a little farther north. I like Adatash and, and um, I mean, Loon's pretty close. So like it's, it's an all right mountain to go to, but um, yeah, I've only been to Cannon once and didn't have the greatest time. It's rough, right? It's like double diamond everywhere. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. no, I hear. <laughs> How about you, Ben? Where do you go? Um, you know, uh, Gunstock is really close to my house. Um, but I think my favorite mountain is probably Mount Snow. It's just it has like the most variety of everything. Um, but yeah, I think Canon. It more it depends on the time of year that you go. Um, if they've like just made snow, or if it's it's been just really cold and. Um, really cold not snowing so much you know i know this is a motorcycle podcast and racing podcast but paul i gotta ask these guys one other question just because of this idea about uh, snow skiing in the east coast which is so different than out your way paul and a lot of the people from california that go to whether it's tahoe or whatever um have either of you guys tiger ben have you ever skied out west and they say it's quite different than what we have in the northeast have either of you gone out there no, I, I really want to go out to Colorado at some point this winter, but, um, you know, I, I think everywhere is not getting much snow. So, um, right. That's hope, true. Yeah. That's hope, true. Hopefully one day make a trip out, but. How about you, Ben? Have you skiing out West? No, I have not. I've only, I've only skied up in New Hampshire. So I don't I know. It's a whole different world out there. I guess the snow is different and everything. So, um, well, listen, you guys have both got stuff going on. Um, thanks for coming on our show and announcing that you're going to be teammates on uh, Aprilia RS660s on the Robem engineering team. Um, I assume so. Uh, Teague, will you be 79? Yep, yep. They're all 79. Okay. Ben, 72, same numbers? Yep, yep. Got to keep the same number this year. Okay, so we'll be used to seeing you guys out there on different bikes. Well, different bikes, a whole different class for you, Ben. But uh, Teague, you know, going over to the a competitor after being for years on a Suzuki SV650, and that's that team's good. That's a good program, um, and Aprilia really has their eyes on what they're doing with with those bikes. So, um, good luck to you guys, and you got two races coming up at. Uh, at Daytona to kick off and uh, have have fun this weekend with your endeavors and and uh, Ben with you on flat track and you, really you guys thanks so much for being on with us yeah flat thank track. you guys yeah we'll see you guys in uh, in a couple of months down in Florida for sure yeah sounds good thank you all right thank you.